So before I start the rest of this video, I think I, just, I think I should explain a couple things. I know like last time, um, like the end of last video, I think I said something. I'm a glutton for punishment because I'm doing all this extra stuff. Well, yes and no. This truck is turning out into a good test run for a couple other things I want to do on other vehicles. Um, talk a little bit about the air conditioning stuff later. That are things that I maybe I want to do to my 80 project that has kind of went on hold for a little bit just because I'm trying to get other things done because I have to do them outside and I don't want to do shit outside in the winter. So I'm going to do it now in the summer. Um, and then the whole um, newer, no, not necessarily newer drivetrain, but the fuel injection, that whole setup. I have a 76 D100 slant six that's about half done. We'll just say that. Um, one day out of the blue, I thought, well, I want to put, maybe I should put fuel injection in there because I, I bought a, it's a slant six. I put a five speed in it out of um, a newer truck, like 88, uh, 93 or whatever. They had a light duty five speed and stuff um, in Dakotas and full sizes. Anyway, so I had this 90 parts truck here that I bought just for the drive shafts. And then I started thinking, you know, maybe I could use that fuel injection setup on this slant six. Because the slant six is a 3.7 liter, that V6 is a 3.9, almost the same. The distributor, obviously six cylinder, turns the same direction. So I should be able to take, in theory, take the guts out of one distributor, throw them in the other, put them back in the slant six, and that that part of it should work. Um, and then hooking everything else up. But to do all of that on something just overall in a project I haven't done before, not that it's super difficult but you just run into a lot of little little um roadblocks and little issues that you don't think of ahead of time whereas with this since i'm not changing anything like that i'm just putting this 90 drivetrain with a fuel injection and everything else all these other little things that i'll now have the knowledge base to to take care of a little easier like how to route wires and and what kind of clips i need here and and what do i have to change for here and blah 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 all that stuff so that part of the conversion on that 76 should be easier because you know the the physical part of putting it together or getting it all in there should be easier and one of the big things of course is the, the dash harness stuff where do i mount everything because that one is a nice truck it's really done body wise i have to find a box for it i think i found a box for it and then i kind of screwed up the fender a little bit messing with it one day and so i have to rework the fender a little bit so body wise it's basically done i gotta do interior but you know, so i just have to get, basically do the same thing to that one i do this one gut the dash rewire everything and then figure out how i connect you know the old dash to the new harness da 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 da, da all that stuff so again this is kind of a test bed for for that truck it's a test bed a little bit for my 80 and probably a handful of other projects coming down the pipe where eventually I'm going to want to change this, that, or the other thing. Um, so, yeah, a glutton for punishment, but it's also looking far enough ahead to projects that I have half-assed started or I may change my mind on as things go as things go on. So, yeah, it's a lot of work, but hopefully it'll uh, save the time later on down the road. Um, so, what am I talking about? I'm talking about dash, and I'm talking about AC in this one, and maybe something else, depending on how long everything else gets. All right, enjoy. All right, so rather than just sit here and talk and show things, I'm gonna talk and work at the same time, kind of go over what, uh, what the process is. So, um, based off of what I talked about last time anyway, I'm going to be, um, be getting a different socket. You know. I'm going to uh, get this dash panel ready to go just in case I decide to, to use it that way. When it's ready to go, it's ready to go, or if I need it anyway. So that's what I'm doing right now. I'm just taking everything apart so I can get at it all nice and easy like. And uh, why on earth is this not coming apart like it should? Pissing me off here. And the nuts are stripped out. Dang it. So anyway, um, I, I'll show you later about the, the uh, air conditioning 
evaporator core and stuff. So anyway, um, back to this. Just taking everything apart, deciding whether I'm gonna how much of it I'm gonna use on in there. And some fucking dumbass. Strip a bolt out. Yeah, that's the first thing you should do. Just ignore it. Let the next guy fucking deal with it. Dumb bastards. Anyway, got to decide what I'm going to do with the radio part of it. Um, I've got this one that's out of this extra dash. I've got the one that was in the truck to begin with. Pissing me off big time. I could go, there's a couple different routes I could go. I could just test and verify, well, I'll be testing and verifying the AM radios anyway, because it's AM only. See if they work. I could go AM only. That's not really much of an option, actually, because I mean, I listen to AM radio a lot, but not that much. God, motherfucking damn it, these dumbasses. Uh, another option is, let me go grab that thing quick. So another option I have is hook up the original AM radio, and there's this guy. This is just a really tiny little FM radio only. Antenna goes in here, antenna goes back up to the original radio, and then to listen to FM, you turn it, tune it to, uh, I forget whatever, it'll tell you on the back here, what about what channel to tune it to, you turn it on, and then it broadcasts the FM channel through the AM, and then you listen to it that way. Kind of cool. I've had, had this in another pickup for quite a while until I change radios. So the other option is finding a different radio. Because starting in 75-ish, depending on the vehicle, radios were pretty much standardized, size, shape, mounting, all that stuff. Prior to that, they were somewhat standard on the, on the body they went into. So I could put a newer radio in. The problem is they have a bigger face, which I can mount in here. I've got the space inside the dash to do it because the, the housing of the radio is the same size. It's the face plate is really what changed. The problem is on these, it says Dodge here really nice. Well, then I have to cut this out. I probably end up cutting off the entire thing thing where it says Dodge to make the next one fit. I don't know if I want to do that. If I do, I'm going to find, because I know I've got one or two of these that someone has hacked the radio into, so it's already destroyed anyway. If I put the newer radio in, that's what I'll do, or I'll do this option. And then either way, i got to figure out what I'm going to do with speakers. One speaker in the dash is probably not going to be enough, particularly for a club cab. Um, but then I don't know where to put speakers. If it was a regular cab, I'd get the cab corner, like behind the seat cab corner mounts um, that they had available. I'd put those in and uh, go that route. But with these, but with the club cab, I can't really do that because I don't have cab corners, like traditional cab corners where I could mount those things, and especially with the fuel filler in there, that really eliminates that option. So, and I don't, I'm not a big fan of cutting speakers into doors, putting a little, a couple little six inch or something like that in the doors, very doable. If I do that, well then I gotta do some extra work just on the doors, because I figure if I'm gonna do that, I don't want it to look like there's just a big freaking speaker there. I'd probably put carpet on the bottom panels, which, not that big of a deal, I just gotta go have somebody uh, cut carpet and sew the edges and stuff like that. But, yeah. Um, but I gotta make that, make up my mind on what I'm gonna do with that for sure. I think I'm gonna shut the camera off because I think there's gonna be some swearing happening here pretty soon because these fucking idiots before me. Uh, you know, the, the wires go into the amp meter and the gauge cluster. They stripped out the nuts and they just kept slamming them on until now they won't come off. They'll spin, but they won't come loose. So, all right. Okay, so first things first. If you can see the... Okay, first things first. 
Yeah, you can kind of see there in the sunshine. Yeah, they're stripped out. Some flipping idiot. You know, I don't get that. Why? Why would you wreck an otherwise good gauge by, I don't know, putting those on with an impact or something? Stupidity. Anyway, here it is. I'll show you the whole thing. All stripped out. A little rust. A little mouse nest here and there, which I knew that already. Um, looks kind of ugly, but it'll sandblast just fine. Um... Oh, I got two. I got two screws yet to take out. <laughs> Missed those. <clears throat> this was a pretty loaded truck, cargo light. So it has the cargo light. The club cab that it might be going into doesn't have that. So if I decide to use this in there, I'm gonna leave this in there. But I'm not gonna go with a factory style cargo light because I don't feel like taking apart a bunch of interior just to run wires up in the back and blah 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 so <clears throat> what I'm thinking about doing if I do this is go with a um like what like what the newer trucks have like the under bed or under rail um cargo lights so it just shines down into the bed itself not just over everywhere that's kind of what I'm thinking right now um got a Bunch of little holes to weld shut. This one had extra chrome or extra wood grain trim on it, which I'm not going to put in the other one. So I got a few extra holes here and there. Um, and had, like a lot of these trucks, had extra stuff screwed to the face of it because it's a metal dash and you can do that kind of thing. Weld all those shut. I was tempted to maybe leave this one here in because I got to put my overdrive switch somewhere, but I don't know if I want to put it there because I don't know where exactly I'm going to have room or not have room with my ac duct because i know that kind of drops down and goes this way um all the other stuff on the 90 wiring harness because the 90 or 81 and up the fuse box is basically underneath the steering column not way over here so i gotta mount that somewhere up in this area because i've only got so much room with the wires there's a couple other little modules of some sort on that wiring harness that they gotta go somewhere i yeah the one thing I hope I can do, because it had the, the 90, had a message center. And what all that was, I don't exactly know. I know, like, if it was four-wheel drive, it'd tell you that stuff. But I'm hoping maybe I can mount that right there in the old fuse box hole. Like I said, and I don't know what all that message center would do. Is, I think it's kind of like a check engine light, really. So I wouldn't necessarily need that normally, hopefully. Um, but anyway, yeah, just sandblast it, weld some holes shut. Prime it, paint it, and then it's ready to go if I decide to go with this dash, the factory AC dash, into that truck. Again, you know, like I talked about, it's still going to be a pain in the ass because you can see where the screw holes are that hold the top in, and that's underneath, that's underneath the windshield gasket. Oh well, anyway. That's a lot of pieces for a heater box, and that's not even all of them. There's at least one longer duct work that I still have to go dig out of another parts truck. Um, and then all the little flapper doors, they're all metal. They need to get sandblasted and a couple other pieces. They're sitting in a different pile. Okay, I'm about ready to start reassembly here. I've got all my metal pieces are sandblasted, got them painted. Did that a couple days ago. One thing I forgot to mention earlier, I found a crack. Kind of goes from right about there all the way down and then down a ways here which is weird it's not like there's any stress on here there's a lot holding this together to the point where i, I don't think it's a, a crack from being flexed or anything i think it's just a crack from i don't know anyway i fixed it with some epoxy both sides sprayed a little black on the outside i'll spray a little black on the inside not that it matters but you know just just because that's the way i am throw a little paint on there and then um I'll start putting this all together. One piece, um, actually no, never mind. I'll talk about that later. Got the heater box done. All this foam on the outside, which most people have never seen because it's usually not there. Probably disappeared a long time ago. I've seen bits and pieces, just never all of it in one place at one time, so. But it looks pretty good. All the inside stuff is done. Uh, the kit was missing a few pieces I had to kind of make my own, but. Um, Hopefully the next kit has got them all off to check it before I start. Another thing I did, I made sure all my vacuum my actuators work. Hooked up the vacuum pump to here. 
and uh, pulled vacuum this way, that way, made sure nothing uh, pulled too hard. The worst one is this guy in the other position when it's all the way over. It, it takes nothing excessive by any means, like seven pounds and it starts to move. Well, once they kind of get used some and the, the foam, the new foam kind of wears a little bit, it'll probably move super easy. All the rest of them moved with less than five pounds of vacuum. So if your engine can't produce five pounds of vacuum, I think worrying about your air conditioning working, working is probably the least of your problems. So anyway, this is done. That way the next step, which will be in the next video, when I get to that, I can do the next step. Like It's a big, a whole bunch of little steps, but it's all gonna happen in kind of one step. The next thing to get this in, to get my new dash frame in, which is kind of back there. Um, get all that put in basically in one big, one big Valiant swoop. Um, so yeah, and then there's the motor, the blower motor anyway. It squeaks and squeals a little bit, so I'm going to take it over to the guy that does all my uh, starters and that kind of stuff and see if he can put a different bearing or two in it, if that makes a difference. Otherwise, I might just have to get it oiled up good and hope for the best. I kind of hate doing that, but I would rather have that because the replacement ones, fans, just look totally different. And I kind of want to keep it as, as close as possible looking at least factory Yes, this truck didn't originally have AC in it, but it's going to have a factory AC setup. That kind of stuff. So, and yeah, I realize making it look factory with a, a fuel-injected motor in there is kind of impossible, but let me live in my own little world for a while, will ya?